We don't look much like a bunch of revolutionaries. And yet, we are, all of us, children of the revolution. I'm not speaking of any human revolution, because all they produce in the end is bloodshed. I'm speaking about the revolution of God. That's what draws us together. The revolution of God, the great proclamation of which is the Bible. In the ancient world, and still now, in worlds that are pagan, the fundamental assumption is the natural inequality of human beings. Some people are superior to others. Not all are equal. We see this in what we have heard from the prophet Amos, where the prophet condemns those, he say, says, who are at ease. They're the important people, the people who really matter, who lie on their beds of ivory, lounge on their couches, bawl to the sound of the harp, and drink wine by the bowlful. These are the people, it seems, who matter, and they are far superior to others, because, as the prophet says, but about the ruin of Joseph, the other people, they don't care at all, because they are superior. Why should they worry about the poor people who are ruined. The same theme is taken up in the gospel that we have just heard, proclaimed in Aramaic, where the rich man dresses in purple and fine linen and feasts magnificently every day. But there at his gate is the poor man Lazarus covered in sores. But you see, Lazarus wasn't equal to the rich man. Why should the rich man bother about this pathetic creature lying at his front gate? He inhabited a world where you only met and, and dealt with, related to, your equals. Which is why, even after death, he speaks about his brothers, his equals, but he doesn't worry about Lazarus because he didn't worry about Lazarus in life. In fact, you see, Lazarus was invisible. The rich man wouldn't even have seen him. Lazarus was inaudible. The rich man wouldn't have heard him even. He was in another world. But you see, it's that kind of world which assumes the natural inequality of human beings that the Bible puts a bomb under. That's the revolution of God. Because what the Bible speaks about and what we celebrate here this afternoon is not the natural inequality of human beings, but the natural God-given equality of every human being, even the pathetic creature who lies unseen and unheard at my gate or beside my cathedral. The natural God-given equality of every human being, whoever she or he may be. That's what the Bible proclaims. Because, you see, the Bible was produced by a community of slaves set free, a community where all were slaves set free, and therefore all were equal, all were brothers and sisters, even the king 
was just another one of his brothers and sisters. God alone was superior. God alone was unequal. But everyone in the community of God, ancient Israel, was a slave set free and completely equal. That was revolutionary in the ancient world and it's revolutionary still. Jesus picks up the same theme later in the Gospel of Luke when he says you only have one benefactor, one patron, and that's God. But you see, the Roman world presumed that there were two classes of people, patrons, benefactors who were rich, and clients, poor people who could only survive by attaching themselves to the patron, the benefactor. And what Jesus says is no to that world. You're all clients. There's only one patron, one benefactor, and that's God. In that sense, you're all brothers and sisters, born of the same flesh and totally dependent upon the same God. So you see, this rich man in the gospel wasn't necessarily a bad person. We don't know. But he was a human being caught up in a very bad system, a very bad culture, which said that some people were unequal, inferior, and therefore not to be seen and not to be heard. Now, the same can be true of us without us even realising it. Earlier this week I was up in Townsville at the assembly of the National Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Catholic Council. And for a very long time in this country, the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples have in fact been invisible and inaudible. That's why it's important that we talk now about them having a voice to the national parliament, being heard, not inaudible anymore. So there on our doorstep, at our front gate, is a classic example of a world that treats some people as unequal, inferior, invisible, inaudible. But the same can be true of migrant and refugee peoples in a land like this. And I say this on World Migrant and Refugee Sunday. Many of you have come from elsewhere seeking a home. And many of you have come not because you wanted to, you were driven out of your homeland by war or persecution or, or so many other factors, so much other suffering. You came looking for a genuine home, but at times you too have been made invisible, inaudible. You have been treated as if you were somehow second-class citizens, not quite equal, children of a lesser God. Well, to all of that here today, we say no. All of you, whoever you are, wherever you come from, this is your home. You are equal. We need to see you, as we do here this afternoon. We need to hear you in the church and in society more generally in this country. In writing his letter to Timothy, St Paul says of Timothy that he spoke the truth, spoke up for the truth, in front of many witnesses. Well, that's what we are doing as children of the revolution here this afternoon. Like Timothy, speaking up for the truth. And what is the truth? The truth is that all are equal and are possessed of an equal and magnificent dignity given by God. Someone who understood that in a most unusual and profound way was Giovanni Battista Scalabrini. And that's why he's being made a saint on October the 9th. He was the Bishop of Piacenza in Italy, the founder of the Scalabrinian missionaries, whom we have in our midst, thank God, 
here in Brisbane. He founded this community of priests and brothers to go and look after the immigrant people, so many of whom left Italy because of poverty. But in fact, the Scalabrinians now look after all kinds of immigrant peoples. And when I say look after them, what they are doing is they are proclaiming that truth that those who come to these shores, or any shores, in search of a home are not children of a lesser God. They are possessed of that unique and magnificent dignity that God gives to every human being. So we give thanks for the witness of people like Giovanni Battista Scalabrini. We give thanks for all of you and the communities that you represent. What a gift that your communities are for this land and how different the land and the church in this country would look without you. So we give God thanks for these great gifts and we pray that we as a church and as a nation will understand and enter more deeply into the great revolution of God which says that we are all equal, brothers and sisters, flesh and blood, each to the other. Amen.